Ladies and gentlemen, let's for Gaming Telecom video. We're going to be talking all about graphics cards. As you're aware, GTC has been raging on, and along with it, there have been other rumors uh, emerging in the industry. So, we're going to be talking about what's been happening over the past 24 to maybe 48 or so hours. So, we're going to start out with the shortest rumor, the easiest one to explain because there's not really any ambiguity there. First of all, AMD's Radeon Pro Duo is going to be launching in about three weeks. We're going to see it hitting the shelves on April 26th of this year, of course. Now, we don't know if the review embargo is going to lift sooner, so I would, as usual, do not pre-order any product until you know whether it's good. I don't care if it's a game, I don't care if it's a piece of hardware. Unless you absolutely need it, don't do it, because you never know if there's going to be faults with it, all of that stuff. With that said, it's looking to be a pretty damn good piece of hardware. Um, it's primarily focused on professional individuals or for individuals who are creating VR applications, but it's still going to be pretty, pretty awesome for those wanting to play games. But it's because it's a mixture of a Radeon and a Fire Pro series, it's not really going to be for just gamers. It's going to be more for professional individuals as well. It offers 16 teflops of FP32 computing performance, and that's with two Fiji GPUs featuring 8192 stream processors and 8GB of HPM memory. That comes with the usual caveat of that memory being split between the two GPUs and an all-in-one hybrid cooling um, system designed by Cooler Master. Now, of course, that's not to say that, once again, this product is not necessarily going to be bought by gamers, but it's not necessarily the intended market. But, kind of cool, nice-looking GPU, if nothing else. The card that AMD are touting towards gamers, of course, and we know that they've been working on for some time, is the Polaris lineup. Now, the latest rumours come to us from Hardware Battle. Unfortunately, the actual article is locked off to anyone who is not a paying member, basically a regular subscriber or a regular viewer. So, you know, that sucks, but I can tell you what they say. So basically, the launch is supposedly going to happen in June. We don't know when that is exactly, but it looks like end of June. The preview, however, is likely to happen in May because of Computex, it would be very unlikely for AMD to just go to Computex, especially after showing Polaris already um, at the Caspian conference. It just doesn't make any sense for them to just be like, well, I'm sure Computex is fine, especially when everyone's expecting NVIDIA to at least show something. Please show something, NVIDIA. Please. I mean, seriously. Anyway, what we understand, this means that Computex, we're going to see something, whether it's going to be a paper launch, whether it's just going to be some slides, whether it's going to be AMD saying, hey, this is when we're going to be launching and here are the prices, we don't know, but they're going to most likely make some big unveiling and then we're going to see the GPUs once again at some point in June, let's say the latter half. But how is it all going to work? Because once again, I said this is Polaris 10. So the 490 and the 490X, I'm just going to say 490 for this video but do know I'm also referring to the 490X because it's just really annoying to keep saying 490 and 490X. So the 490 as I said will be based upon Polaris 10. The interesting thing is that this is not a Fiji related product at all. This is purely Polaris. So from what we understand there are three two to three potential scenarios. The first one is that Fury is faster than the R9 490 series. So this means that Fury is still going to be the flagship AMD card aimed at customers until Vega is available. Vega, of course, is the HBM2 absolute behemoth that we've talked about multiple times. If you need more information, you can simply search for Vega on the channel or look at redgamingtech.com. You probably know about it by now. Anyway, it's absolutely a monster. It's looking to be absolutely crazy, but we don't know when it's going to be released exactly, but from what AMD's official slides have said, it's going to be some point in 2017. This is primarily down to the, I guess you could say, slow production of HPM2. So, that's option one. So, option one is that Fury X is faster than Polaris. The second option is that Fury is slower than Polaris. So, that's going to be just kind of one of those, well, Polaris 10 
in other words, the 490, for sake of argument, is faster than Fury X. So AMD could use it as a potential entry for the 480 series, therefore massively reducing the Fury's price. The third option is that they might just say, no, no more Fury. And what they could then do is just basically nuke the lineup for now. That's also a potential option. They might, for example, nuke the Fury, nuke the Fury X, and instead start pushing their Nano. We just don't know. What we do know is that the 490 is meant to counter the GTX 1080 or the X80 or whatever it ends up being called. Now, what this means is AMD, of course, are basically saying, well, we know roughly what NVIDIA are going to be doing, so here's what our options are. And then, of course, the ultra high end, the equivalent of the the Titans and the uh, Vegas are going to launch most likely at some point early next year. I also, because NVIDIA, um, at the time of the... Uh, their initial conference at GTC 2016. They didn't give us too much information regarding availability, or they told us as soon. I did want to have a very small update on that. So it looks like the shipping of the GP based Tesla P100 boards is going to happen in June. That's going to be for HPC slash supercomputing um, basis. And then OEM is going to happen in Q1 2017. If you said to me, but that doesn't really tell me about the customer variants. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, from what we understand, the uh, most likely slash only scenario at this point is for NVIDIA to announce something at Computex. Now, I could start giving some speculation as to why NVIDIA did not show something at GTC. There's a possibility that, well, we could be seeing some delays with Pascal. We could just see that NVIDIA aren't ready to show. Maybe they d just didn't feel confident. Maybe they just wanted to wait until Computex to have something to show at Computex. We just don't know. It's very frustrating from the perspective of customers, though, because, you know, if you're a gamer, they talked about a lot of cool stuff. They talked about, let's say, um, artificial intelligence. They talked about some virtual reality, self-driving cars, all of the stuff that was kind of cool, but... Ultimately, we want to see some stuff in the gaming side of things. So all we can do is wait, unfortunately. I would say that if we don't hear something really tangible by Computex, people are going to be really worried about what the hell's going on with Pascal. But I don't see a reason why at Computex we wouldn't. Obviously, don't hold me to that. I'm not working for NVIDIA. I don't have it in source in NVIDIA. You know, let's just call him John, who's telling me all this stuff. I'm just saying it makes a lot of sense for us to see something from NVIDIA and it does go what most of the people in the industry are saying. So what I'm really hoping is that Computex is the time where we start seeing some real hard concrete information from both companies. Um, we've heard a lot about them. Now I want to make it clear that I don't necessarily think that Polaris or Pascal are going to be the second coming. I don't think installing, you know, a Polaris 11 based GPU, which is obviously the slower of the two, out of Polaris 10, uh, 11, uh, 10 and 11, Polaris 11 is actually slower, which is rather counterintuitive. But anyway, I don't really expect you to be able to install a Polaris 11 based GPU and then suddenly be running, you know, triple monitor setup at 4K at 120 hertz. I don't believe that. But what I do think is it's going to be a nice, a nice step up from what we've currently got and that's what I'm really hoping for I'm hoping that we're finally going to start to see the I guess you could say the the next evolution in graphical architectures that have been promised for so long who's going to be on top because I've been asked this a couple of times now do I believe it's going to be Pascal do I believe it's Polaris who do I want to win the answer is I don't know who's going to be on top um it could be Nvidia or better it let's say the GTX 1070 and AMD might have a better on uh, R9 490X or it could be the reverse it could be Nvidia are maybe slightly slower but slightly cheaper it could be AMD is slightly cheaper but slightly slower it could be six to one half a dozen of the other based upon the application my advice to you unless you've got a specific setup by which I mean you're heavily invested in one of the companies 
for example, let's say you've got a FreeSync monitor, let's say a really new FreeSync triple monitor setup, you're probably not, unless there's something really wrong with AMD's new cards, you're probably not going to want to jump onto Pascal because it's going to cost you a lot of money. You're going to have to rebuy your monitors. The reverse will also be true of NVIDIA. If you've got like a really nice, um, let's say, G-Sync you know, setup, do you really want to then jump over to Polaris? Probably not. But which company do I want? Well, I just want the best for the customer. That's the way forward. I want a nice competitive GPU market. That is the best for everyone. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.